Hello. I seem to be disappearing. Today we're going to do it. We're going to do a really hard thing. Very challenging. Real college algebra math. Although I shouldn't use the word real. But there's something real about it. You'll see. Let's do it. Oh, yes, and that ear, do you see that ear right there? There's an ear, yes. Someone is in my lap right there. So I'm going to get help. Hard jobs need kittens and cats in the lap. There we are. This is an introductory exercise after which we go on to the real thing. Yes, we do. Well, that seems to be large enough, doesn't it? All right, now, <clears throat> this says given the polynomial function f of x equals x to the third minus 10x squared plus 48x minus 64 that has the given zero right here. In fact, I think it would be an extremely good idea for me to circle this. You're being told that this is a zero of the function, and you're being asked to come up with the other two zeros of the function, which happen to be listed down here, but under normal circumstances, you wouldn't see them. So it would be like you're heading into the dark with only one hint. Let's do this. We're going to use synthetic division. Just watch. Two. What? No. I want to write in black. Two. Backwards L. One. The one in front of X to the third. Negative 10. Positive 48. Negative 64. Oh, are you going to leave? OK. Skip a line, draw a line. If 2 really is a 0 of this function right here, then it will have a zero remainder. Remember that. Now one, I'm going to bring that down. One times two is two. Negative 10 plus two is negative eight. Negative eight times two is negative 16. 48 plus negative 16, which is really 48 minus 16, is 32. 32 times 2 is positive 64. Negative 64 plus 64 is 0. And our quotient is x squared minus 8x plus 32. So what? Well, we are going to find the zeros 
of x squared minus 8x plus 32 in order to find the other two zeros of f of x. So a equals 1, b equals negative 8, and c equals 32. And x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which will be negative, negative 8, plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 <coughs> times 1 times 32 over 2a, which will be 2 times 1. Good. Now I'm going to calculate the number underneath the square root. Parentheses, negative eight parentheses closed, squared. Nope. Squared. Squared, there you go. Minus four times one times, no, that's a minus, times 32. Okay, so negative eight squared minus four times one times 32, enter. Negative 64. So x equals negative negative 8, which is positive 8, plus or minus the square root of negative 64 over 2. 2 times 1 is 2. We have a negative no number under a square root. That means our answers are going to be complex conjugates. 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 64 over 2, and that will be 8 plus or minus the square root of, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 64, 64 over two, and I come down here. Eight plus or minus, the square root of negative one is I. And the square root of 64 is eight over Two. Now notice, <clears throat> I have a GCF. So I'm going to pull the eight, that's supposed to be an equal sign, really is. Eight parentheses one plus or minus, no. Okay, plus or minus I over two. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 8 four times. So I'll have four parentheses, 1 plus or minus i over 1. But since these are complex, complex conjugate zeros, 
I have to put this in A plus B I form. So let's get rid of that equal sign and help you remember A, A plus B I. Not the same A and B as in the, the quadratic formula, different A and B. I'm going to redistribute the four so that I will have four times one is four plus or minus 4i, which means, of course, 4, 4 minus 4i, comma, 4 plus 4i. And those are my other zeros. We're going to be doing this a lot. The only difference is, this is the last time you're going to see a given zero. From now on, we have to find our own from scratch. Let's go on. Let's make this bigger. A, find the rational zeros and then the other zeros of the polynomial function x to the third plus 7x squared minus 2x minus 14. That is solve f of x equals zero. That's how you find the zeros and B, factor into linear factors. Now, all of the answers are here, but we're going to go through the steps. It can take something of a long time to graph a good graph that, that is centered and that you can see clearly um, so I went ahead and I made the graphs early. You want to graph your functions. Now, after playing with this, I discovered that the best, the best graph would go from negative 10 to positive 5 on the x-axis with a scale of 1 so that for instance, this is one, two, three, four, five, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. Just one number between each of the scale marks. My Y axis goes from negative 15 up to 50 with a scale of five. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on, also going down this way. Now, what we're going to be asked to do is find the zeros of the function. Here's a real zero. Here's a real zero. And here is a real zero. Real zeros are numbers in the real number system. And the real number system, another way of saying it is the x-axis and the y-axis. They don't have any complex numbers on them. Thank goodness. Okay, now, there's a step you need to go to. Sometimes you need to and sometimes you don't. And here you really don't. But we're going to do it anyway. 
we're going to use P over Q. Minding your P's and Q's. Here's how you do it. All of the factors of the constant at the end of the polynomial make up P. And all of the factors of the leading coefficient make up Q. And if there are any real rational zeros, if there are, and there's never a guarantee, but if there are real rational zeros, they will come from the set of numbers called P over Q. Both the positive and the negative versions of those numbers. So I use set notation because I'm, I'm going to be writing the members of a set, the P over Q set. Now, my wavy fraction bar. Up on P, we're going to write all the factors of 14, and you don't need to worry about the sign for this because we've already taken those signs into account by writing a plus or minus out here. So let's see, 14. 14 equals 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. So that makes the factors of 14 1, 2, 7, and 14. Meanwhile, the factors of 1 are just 1. And we have a plus or minus in front to take care of any minuses. So that's 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 7 over 1, and 14 over 1. And that will give us plus or minus 1 over 1, which is 1, plus or minus 2 over 1, which is 2, plus or minus 7 over 1, which is 7, and plus or minus 14 over 1, which is plus or minus 14. Life is easier when you've got a 1 as your leading coefficient. Now, if, if I have any rational zeros, they will be one of these numbers positive one, negative one, or positive two, neg negative two, or positive seven or negative seven, or positive 14 or negative 14. Let's see. This is a one, and this is a two. That zero is on the x-axis between one and two, which makes it a fraction or a decimal or a root. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. This zero is between negative one and negative two. So for the same reason, I don't know exactly what that is. But it looks like this zero actually crosses the x-axis at a number I can calculate. Uh, not calculate, I can tell by looking. It's negative seven. Negative seven, right there. Then that's negative eight, negative nine, negative 10. 
OK. Now that we can make a good guess. If this, well, I can't call it A or B or C, but this is the first thing I have to do is find my set of P over Q. Now I am going to find out if negative seven really is a zero of my function. One, seven, negative two, negative 14. One, seven, negative two, negative 14. If negative seven is a zero, I'll have a zero for the remainder. If negative seven is not a zero of f of x, then I'll have some other number and I'll have to throw negative seven away. Let's do synthetic division. Bring down the one. One times negative seven is negative seven. Seven plus negative seven is zero. Zero times negative seven is zero. Negative two plus zero is negative two. Negative two times negative seven is positive 14. Negative 14 plus positive 14 is zero. Yay! So negative seven is a rational zero. a rational zero of f of x. Now we have to check our quotient. Since this was one, x to the third, this will be one x squared plus zero x minus two. Now I am going to, it's not factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula to find the two zeros of this quotient. So let's see, this is, I'll say x squared plus zero x minus two equals zero. No, I don't have to use the quadratic formula. Plus two, plus two. X squared equals two. No one cares what X squared equals, so let's take the square root of X squared and solve for X. But whatever I do on the left, I have to do on the right, and I have to put a plus or minus in front of the square root of two. So X equals plus or minus the square root of two. These are my other zeros. The way the, the question is worded. Now, if we go up here, we'll see here's the rational zero, and here are the other zeros. We are almost done, but not quite, because B is going to be new for you. So I have to introduce you to the formula that makes this possible. The factorization of f of x into linear factors. Linear, you recall, means that x is to the one power. 
and this is a cubic function. So now, here's the formula. Um, and I should write something. This is a momentous occasion. Formula for factoring polynomials. I should say any polynomial. into linear factors. <clears throat> the, the correct wording is into a product of linear factors. Linear factors. product because we're going to be multiplying them. Well, we're not going to multiply them, but we could. Linear fro, no. Linear factors. Here it is. Since this is a cubic, it has three zeros. That means it'll have three linear factors. F of X equals A. That's the same number as in the quadratic formula. The leading coefficient times X minus Z1, the first zero, times X minus Z2, the second zero, times X minus Z3, the third zero. Well, let's go see what A is. A is one. Whenever you multiply by a one, it ends up disappearing, but let's put it there for now. And then I'll have X minus negative seven, X minus the square root of two, and X minus negative the square root of two. Here we have X minus Z1, X minus Z2, X minus Z3. Well, obviously I have to clean this up a little bit before I write it in the answer box. One times all this is all this. If that were any number other than one, I'd have to leave it there. But one vanishes. Now we're going to have X minus minus, which is plus seven. I should say X minus negative. <clears throat> X minus positive, <clears throat> the square root of two. My goodness. <clears throat> Excuse me. And X minus negative, the square root of two. So this is what I'm going to write in the answer box. Now, where is the answer box? Right here. 
you don't need to put those ones, so let me erase them. And here this says the factorization of f of x into linear factors is, is and equals means the same thing. So let me write that as well. Of course, you already know that. And here are the three factors that go with the three zeros. that a cubic is required to have. Unless there's repetition, but all of these have multiplicity one. So we don't have to get fancy. Now, how was that? Let's look at what we did. We're being told to find the rational zeros and then the other zeros, which could be radicals or could be complex conjugates. For any polynomial that you're given. So the first thing you do actually usually the first thing you do is you write you write your p's over q. Then you how are you going to know what the best candidate is to be a rational zero? so that you don't have to go through all of them. You really don't want to do synthetic division with all of them, do you? No. So you're going to graph this on your graphing calculator. And look and hope that you see one of them, one number that, where'd it go, that matches a number in here. And there it is, negative seven. Whew. Well, okay, but negative seven is a guess. We don't know. You have to prove it by using synthetic division and getting a remainder of zero. And then, when you have a cubic function, you'll have a quadratic remainder. And you solve this for X to find the other two zeros. Whatever they may be, sometimes they're actually rational numbers. These were irrational. Which is what I should have called these irrational and complex. Then you use your formula for writing uh, uh, polynomials as factors, as linear factors, using the zeros. So that's a, the leading coefficient, times x minus the first zero, times x minus the second zero, times x minus the third zero, and you work it out. We're going to do some more. Okay. Find the rational zeros and then the other zeros of the polynomial function that right there. That is, solve the equation f of x equals zero. Well, this is f of x. So you know that to find zeros, you would have to take two x to the third plus 
3x squared plus 18x plus 27, set it equal to zero and solve. And yes, you could factor by zero. Uh, by, you could factor by grouping. Forget the zero. You could factor by grouping. And that would give you this number, presumably. But that's all it would give you. So I suggest we just move on. Whoa! I've done it again. There. Because I've already graphed this too. This was a bear to graph. I must have spent 15 minutes on it because I wanted you to actually see it the way it is. Here, my x-axis goes from negative five to positive five. And my y-axis goes from negative 50 to 100 with a scale of 10. 10 between each of the scale marks. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and so on as we go down. That's the reason I put these numbers here. I just wanted you to see the scale. All right. So, First thing we're going to do is find P over Q. Now this is going to be more interesting because our leading coefficient, our Q number is A. And 27, okay. So P over Q going to be, well, let's see, let's come up here or over here, 27, I'm going to write down the factor pairs, just the positive ones. One times 27, two, no, three times nine, and then nine times three. Well, there aren't very many, are there? Thank goodness. There are not a lot of factors there. So P, the factors of P will be 1, 3, 9, 27. I'm just listing the factors. 24. Twenty seven over the factors of two are one and two. So here are the possible factor, well, the possible rational zeros. plus or minus, because there are more numbers. One over one, one over two, no. I'm writing down what I want rather than what is true. One over one, one over two. Three over one, Three over two. Nine over one. Nine over two. Twenty seven over one. Twenty seven over two. Okay. Now we can actually leave it this way 
as long as you remember that we're looking at, for instance, positive one and negative one, positive one half and negative one half, positive three and negative three, and on and on and on. And remember, you don't really know this yet. However, what I do see is that there is only one zero, one real zero, because real zeros are on the x-axis. There's only one of them. And I can't be absolutely sure whether it's rational or irrational. So the only number I can find is negative three over two. This is negative one. This is negative two. And halfway between negative one and negative two is negative three over two, which is really negative 1.5, one and a half. Negative one and a half. Well, let's see. I, I agree with you, nobody wants to do synthetic division with fractions, but sometimes you don't have a choice. And you got to do what you got to do. So two, three, 18, and 27. Let's see if that's right. 2, 3, 18, 27, all positive. I bring down the 2. Now that's very handy. 2, where can I write this? 2 times negative 3 over 2 is 2 over 1 times negative three over two, the twos cancel, leaving me with negative three. So two times negative three over two is negative three. And three plus negative three is zero. And zero times negative three over two is zero. And 18 plus zero is 18. And now we have to multiply 18 times negative three over two. Let's do it. 18 times negative three over two is 18, uh-uh. Well, yeah, I mean, it is. It's gonna be 18 over one times negative three over two. Well, 18 will cancel out that two, so let's write 18 with a two. 18 is nine times two. So nine times two over one times negative three over two. Our twos cancel, leaving me with positive nine times negative three, which is negative 20. Seven. So negative 27. Positive 27 plus negative 27 is zero. Woohoo! So negative three over two is a rational zero. And I don't see any others. I don't see any others real zeros at all. Okay, that's a rational zero. 
And here's our quotient, which because this was 2x to the third, this will be 2x squared plus 0x plus 18. So I will have 2x squared, 2x squared plus 18, because 0 times x is 0, equals 0. Subtract 18, subtract 18. 18 minus 18 is 0. We're left with 2x squared on the left and negative 18 on the right. Now I divide by 2. You want to get rid of the 2 before you take the square root. x squared equals negative 9. Now to solve for x, I take the square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Using the same process we used before, we're going to get plus or minus i times the square root of 3. So, however, let's do it honestly for people who might not remember. Negative one times nine, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of nine. So x equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times, oh, I already did that. Yay! I times three. So X equals plus or minus three I. If you're wondering where the three came from, the square root of nine is three. So, these are complex conjugate zeros. CC, zeros. So we have one rational zero, and we have two complex conjugate zeros. Right there, the other zeros are. So those are our three zeros. So now we're going to write f of x as a product of linear factors. a times x minus z1 times x minus z2 times x minus z3, because we're dealing with a cubic. This time, I don't have a one as my leading coefficient. I have a two. Two times x minus negative 3 over 2 times x minus 3i times x minus negative 3i. And so f of x equals 2 times x plus 3 over 2 times x minus 3i times x plus plus 
I. Now let's check up here. Yeah. So this is what you would write in the answer box. And of course, what you would write in this answer box is there and in this answer box there. The only rational zero, the other zeros, and factorization into linear factors. You know why you do that? You do it so that you can look at this and see immediately, first that it's a polynomial, but second that you have three zeros. Now, this is where you really need your P's over Q. When you have a quartic or higher, this becomes a rather lengthy process. So, let us, without any further ado, find our P over Q. And I want to copy this down here so I can see it better. Okay, notice that one of the rational zeros, this one right there, is negative one-seventh. I don't know about you, but I would never have guessed that negative one-seventh was a rational zero. This is why I have to see <coughs> P over Q. Okay, here we go. P, whoop. No. Okay, P equals not what I want. P, yeah, this is darker. P equals um, I guess I should say P over Q equals anyway. Darn it. Okay, now, factorization of 25. 25 equals 1 times 25 and 5 times 5. However, in listing factors, I don't have to list 5 twice. So this is what I'll do. 1 times, well, comma. I'm in a hurry. I should never get in a hurry. Plus or minus. One, 
one, five, twenty five over seven is a prime number, so just one and seven. One and seven. Well, that's not anywhere near as bad as it might have been. All right, P over Q is going to equal plus or minus one over one, one over seven, five over one, five over seven, 25 over one. Well, I don't need to write it over one, do I? 25 over seven. Now we analyze, well, first let's go for one. One is really super obvious. We're going to do synthetic division with one first. One. Seven. Six. Negative six. One. Seventy. Four. Minus one. Fifty. Minus twenty. Five. Now let's make sure four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Seven, negative six, one seventy four, negative one fifty, negative twenty five. Bring down the seven. Seven times one is seven. Negative six plus seven is positive one. One times one is one. Ooh, that'll be 175. 175 times one is 175. Negative 150 plus 175 is 25. 25 times 1 is 25. Negative 25 plus positive 25 is 0. Yep. Now this was 7 times x to the 4th. I've done one synthetic division, which drops this to a cubic. I cannot use the quadratic formula on a cubic. So, I'm going to have to guess from my list. whether that number is negative one-seventh or negative five-sevenths, 25 over seven is greater than one. In fact, it's greater than two. Or over on the negative side, negative two. That would be out here. So, this is very close to zero. Negative one seventh is very close to zero. Five sevenths would be the same as 10 fourteenths, which is over halfway to negative one. So it would be in here somewhere. So yep, we're gonna go, because we don't have any choice we're going to go with negative one seventh because it's in our collection, our set of numbers that could be rational zeros. 
no guarantees. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to erase x to the third. Oh, come on. Ooh, I like that. All right. Negative. Negative. Negative one seventh. There's no reason for me to rewrite this quotient. Bring down the seven. We're going to use the same method we used before. Seven times negative one seventh is seven over one times negative one over seven. The sevens cancel, leaving me negative one. Oh, oh, see I whine. That leaves me with negative one. So seven times negative one seventh is negative one. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 0 times negative 1 seventh is 0. 175 plus 0 is 175. This is going to be fun. Okay, 175 over 1 times negative one seventh. I betcha, I betcha, I can divide 70, 175 by seven. And I bet it'll be negative 25. Okay, because of that negative sign right there. However, I'm not gonna fake it. One seventy five divided by seven is twenty five. Okay, so this is going to be, let's write it like this twenty five times seven over one times negative one over seven. The sevens cancel, leaving me with 25 times negative one, which is negative 25. So 175 times negative one seventh is negative 25. And 25 plus negative 25 is zero. Yes. Woohoo! So both one and negative one seventh are rational zeros of f of x. Now this was up here, up here. This was seven x to the fourth. This becomes 7x to the third. I'm trying to write with my mouse here. And this is now 7x squared. We can handle this. Plus 0x plus 175. So we are now going to look at 7x squared plus 175 equals zero and find the factors, the factors, the zeros of this. Subtract 175. From both sides of the equation leaving me with 7x squared equals negative 175.
five, divide both sides by seven. That will leave me X squared equals negative 25. Take the square root of both sides. Put a plus or minus in front of the square root of negative 25. And that's going to be plus or minus the square root of negative one times 25. This is X. X equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of 25. And that will give me X equals plus or minus I times five, which is written plus or minus five I. And these are complex conjugate zeros of f of x. So the rational zeros are one comma negative one seventh. That is, there are two, one and negative one seventh. The other zeros are five i and negative five i. And now when we write these as the product of linear factors, we're going to write f of x equals a times x minus z1 times x minus z2 times x minus z3 times x minus z4. What's a? It's seven, seven. So f of x equals seven times x minus positive one, times x minus negative one seventh, times x minus positive five i, times x minus negative five i. So this will be f of x equals seven times x minus one times x plus one seventh times x minus five i times x plus five i. Okay, now notice that my order is not, uh, the order of my factors is not exactly the same as theirs. And that's okay, because when you multiply, order doesn't matter. And we are multiplying seven times X minus one times X plus one seventh times X plus five I times X minus five I so I can rearrange those any way I want, except the seven has to be in front. Okay, this was kind of hard. You're gonna need practice. Do practice. That's why you have homework. Talk to you later, bye-bye.